Hi again then guys, and welcome to another instalment of Rivals, the series where we pit natural automotive rivals head-to-head -head in competitions of two or more vehicles, more for the fun of it than as a review or to find out which one is the best in a traditional sense, and often with these series, the car that wins with the most points is not necessarily the quickest. So that is something, of course, to bear in mind. And as usual, I have put links to more information about each of these cars in the description down below for those who are interested in that. But in this particular Rivals matchup, we're pitting the four modern premium WRC cars head to head. Now, we're not featuring the Subaru Impreza sedans or the Mitsubishi Evo 10 because they are, of course, not real rally cars. We are only featuring the four real WRC machines from Ford, Subaru, Suzuki, and Citroen. So, let's get straight to it. First up we have the Citroen C4. This is a vehicle which I've recommended in my top 10 rally cars on Gran Turismo list because of the four vehicles, it's one of my preferred possibly even my personal favourite of the four. It's a very well-balanced and strong all-round vehicle, and although the four cars do in their stock forms in particular fall within very, very similar parameters as far as power, weight, price, PP, etc., when you tune them, which many people will, there are differences. Some very notable ones. Now, the Citroen overall is obviously at least as good as any of the others because they have to be competitive against one another. But I think the main advantage of the Citroen overall is the balance of its handling. Some of the other WRC or other rally machines in general may be quicker than the Citroen for pure speed. Some may have slightly better or worse steering, but overall the Citroen is very driver friendly, relatively beginner friendly and just feels really well balanced through the corners. Overall, it's a strong machine and a good, safe bet of a rally car. In real life, of course, it's had great success, and on the game, you can as well. Next up, of course, we have the Suzuki SX4 WRC machine, and although it would be easy to underestimate this car, being the smallest vehicle of the four and you'd probably assume the least powerful, ironically, it's actually the exact opposite. The SX4 is the most powerful of all four vehicles, very surprisingly to some people. Now, the fact that it is smaller gives it some interesting advantages, but also potentially some things which aren't quite as good. Not necessarily full-on disadvantages, but just points which aren't as good. Now, one of the main advantages, of course, of being a smaller vehicle is nimbleness. Being a smaller car, you can get it through tighter corners, smaller spaces, easier than you can with a larger vehicle, something like a Focus, for instance. The disadvantage is, ironically, that same thing. Because it's smaller, particularly in terms of length, the wheelbase in particular, it's actually not quite as good around long sweeping corners because you don't have that length of the car and in turn the counterbalance that comes from that extra length to swing the back end of the car out and hold it through longer corners. Now the handling on the SX4 is certainly not bad but the fact that it is such a short vehicle compared to the others does affect it in certain corners and it's not necessarily as driver friendly as say the Focus or the Citroen. Overall, though, it's the most powerful, as I said, and probably the most eye-catching due to the bright yellow paint. Next up, we have the Subaru Impreza, probably visually the most plain of the four. It doesn't really look that extreme compared to the standard Impreza, whereas the other cars do look very majorly overhauled compared to their road-going counterparts. The Subaru, though, does exactly what you'd expect from a Subaru or from a Mitsubishi when they were more heavily involved in WRC, and that is, it's just consistent. The Subaru doesn't necessarily need the absolute strongest specs to win. It's just such a good all-round machine that even when it's running the same numbers as other vehicles, the way that it delivers its performance will often give it an advantage. The Subaru manages to run a very fine line between being aggressive enough to be a winner, but at the same time, 
friendly and forgiving enough to allow less experienced rally drivers to learn the tricks of the driving style and attain victory. It's consistent, it never really surprises you or shocks you in any bad way, it's just a dependable, consistent, good car. And finally we have the Ford Focus RS WRC car. Visually it looks nothing like the road going RS, which is a pretty insane looking car. The rally car goes for a much more visually conservative approach, ironically, than the road going version, but at the same time the Focus Although not having necessarily the pedigree of something like an Impreza or an Evo on the rallying scene, very quickly made a name for itself for being very, very strong on the WRC scene. In pretty much all of its forms, the Focus has been a strong rally car, and for pretty much all of the Gran Turismo games, it's been a strong rally car. This just happens to be the latest form of it that we have, and it doesn't let you down. The handling is excellent, the drivability and the manners of the car are very friendly, very forgiving and perfect for less experienced drivers, but at the same time it's extremely quick and very, very competitive. It's not necessarily as forgiving as, say, an Impreza, but it's certainly more forgiving than the Suzuki and has the same kind of well-balanced nature as the Citroen. Overall, the Focus is a very consistent and dependable WRC machine, and if you decide to use it as your rally car of choice, you won't be disappointed. But that's it overall for the individual rundowns, now let's get to the meat. The comparison of our specs. Now, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, all four vehicles run virtually the same parameters. They have slightly different engine sizes and slightly different amounts of torque, but the power, the weight and the price in their standard form, as well as the PEP, are very similar and in many cases exactly the same due to the regulations and rules of rallying. When you tune them, though, that all changes. Now some things they do share in common, such as weight and price. All four vehicles weigh 1230 kilos, all four vehicles are of course all-wheel drive, all four vehicles cost 850,000 credits. All of them are also two-litre vehicles, but interestingly, their exact capacity in terms of cubic centimetres, or cc, is not the same. Now bringing up the specs, as you can see, pretty early on, vehicles start to set themselves apart. The engine capacities, for instance, as I said, are slightly different. For instance, both the Ford and the Citroen do have the larger engines of the four at 1998cc compared to 1994 of the Impreza and 1997, just one cc smaller for the Suzuki. As far as price, they're all the same, so we give them equal points there. As far as the PP, the Impreza is interestingly the highest of them all at 573, just one more than the Suzuki. As far as power though, as we already mentioned earlier on, the Suzuki is the leader at 552 horsepower, and also for torque at 688 foot-pounds. But an interesting thing about all four vehicles is they really do have a huge amount of torque. 644 on the Citroen, 653 on the Focus, 671 on the Impreza, and 688 on the Suzuki. All four of them have very, very impressive amounts of torque. And that's, of course, essential for rallying, to have that kind of torque. Again, like with the price, the fact that they all weigh the same means that we'll give them all a point for that, and as far as the horsepower per tonne, it is again going, of course, being the more powerful, to the Suzuki at 450 horsepower per tonne. Interestingly, although, as always, we're not awarding a point for the lap time due to the fact that it's based, of course, on the driver, the track, and the tuning, it is interesting to note that the fastest of the four was the Focus, with a 2 minute 1 second lap. In second place, it was the Subaru, with a 2.02 lap, then the Citroen, with a 2.03, and then the Suzuki trailing a little bit behind, ironically enough, with a 2.05. So it just goes to show that being the most powerful, for instance, does not equal the fastest. The Suzuki is quick on the straights, but what I mentioned earlier on about it not having quite the counterbalance that you need for larger corners, did affect it. 
it was a little bit more cumbersome, ironically enough, for a smaller vehicle, and that did result in losing a couple of seconds over the other vehicles. Now, if you want to see the exact lap times, you can check those in the description down below. But overall, that does mean that although it was, funnily enough, the slowest of the four, the winner in terms of pure top trumps points is the Suzuki with five points and all three of the other cars get three points apiece. Very interesting to see how quite often the car with the best spec does not turn out to be the quickest. Now sometimes of course that does happen in the opposite way, but more often than not it would seem that the better car on paper isn't necessarily the better car in reality. And that is of course to be noted. Personally, my choice of my favourite of these four would have to be the Citroen, though all round I would say that the Focus is probably the strongest vehicle. Overall though, all four cars are very, very good, and whichever one you choose, it will serve you well. They're all highly capable rallying machines. But that's it overall for this particular Rivals matchup, and as always, if there are particular Rivals showdowns between two or more cars that you would like to see, be sure to slap those down in the comments below. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.